Welcome back all, Daz from Mudoro Techniques. A big Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to all my viewers out there. So I hope you had some lovely time with your family and friends. But back in the Mudoro we've got some new projects that are coming up. So up this week, I'm gonna look at installing an LED light system in my staging yard. So as always, I love adding DCC to it. So what I'm gonna be able to do is be able to switch it on with the switch command via a DCC station decoder. Or if you're running train controller, iTrain, Rock Rail or JMRI, you should be able to make it set up that you can actually access on a soft control panel to turn the lights on and off when the train comes into the yard. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna look at is all the components and then I'll just quickly go through all the connections on how they relate to each component. So the first thing we need obviously is some sort of five volt DC wall watt or power supply. Then on the flip side, we also to run the LED strip side of things. So depending on what your LEDs are running, so mine are a 12 volt DC. So you're also gonna need uh, some sort of wall watt or power supply of 12 volts. The LED strips, come in various lengths. I've made my own light bars and I'll show you them briefly later on in the video. But, so these are a 12 volt version. So the way we're switching on and off is via the Arduino relay and the brains of this process is the Arduino Nano. Also gonna need a some sort of DCC command station. And this little guy here, which is a DCC to Arduino interface which gets the DCC information into the Arduino and is able to use it in the DCC world. So back over to the 12 volt side of things. So you need a, a negative 12 volt DC to the negative binding post of your LED light bars. And likewise, this is how we're gonna end up switching this. So you need a direct 12 volts DC into the common of the relay and then off the normally open which is this bottom binding post directly to the positive of your led light bar so next we're going to look at how the the connections how the arduino is going to control the relay and turn it on and off so as you'll see shortly i will show you very very briefly how what the schematic or the sketch looks like within the arduino ide so it's address number 30 starts on digital pin number 12 or d12 as shown there and that goes to the input pin of the the relay so this is relay number one down the bottom here so that references to that and that's how we control it via the dcc command then the relay also needs a, a negative ground i find it's easier to take it directly off the arduino just seems to to like the voltage a little bit better for some reason and you also need a five volt positive off the Arduino that goes to the VCC pin to power up the relay. So the next thing is to come over to the, the DCC to Arduino interface, and then you need the input or the, the to the digital pin number two, which is the, the interrupt pin on the Arduino. And also this little board also needs some five volt power. So that ground is directly off the Arduino also via the positive and a negative so out in the layout room, I always power my Arduinos off a little five volt bus that I've got running. So this goes to the ground and the, the voltage in or VIN pin. Um, when you're bench testing, you can power it off the USB plug here on the left hand side of the Arduino, but just be mindful you can't do both. So that's how you upload the sketch and you can power it, but obviously very, very difficult in the layout room unless you've got USB points all around your layout. Then you also need a out of your DCC command station, this little DCC to Arduino interface needs an input from, a track input from your DCC command station. So that's pretty well all the connections that we're gonna be using today. So what we'll do, we'll quickly go over to the bench and I will show you what it all looks like in the real world. Just before we go and do that, we'll just get a quick message from my sponsor, PCBWay.com. This video is proudly sponsored by PCBWay.com. If you're a tinkerer, inventor, or advanced electrical engineer, you need to check out PCB Way or you are seriously missing out. 
They are passionate about PCBs ranging from standard to advanced PCBs with 1 to 30 layers with full featured printed circuit boards. PCB Way don't stop there. They offer basically everything you need to make your ideas a reality. Whether you need 3D prints, injection molding or CNC machining, assembly or basic PCB manufacturing, they can do it all for highly competitive prices. Check out their awesome services in the link below and their offer to my viewers who support this channel. All right, so here we've got the connection. So we'll go through the components very, very quickly again. So up the top here, we've got the DCC to Arduino interface. Now I have done a video on how to make these, so I will link that below, so I won't bore you any further with that. So the connection's coming into that. These two little guys here, that it's the, the DCC, um, these two little guys here, that's the DCC signal coming in from your command station. These three cables here, so what it requires is uh, a positive and negative at five volts, DC of course, and the middle cable here is what goes to the, the D2 pin, which is the Arduino interrupt pin. So here we've got the Arduino Nano and obviously the shield so we can have little screw terminals, which is really handy. So if you wanted to do this with a, a Mega or a, a Nano, that is fine as well. You probably don't need that type of, that type of power and this is just a very, very cheap little circuit. Over on the left hand side here we have the Arduino relays. So what happens here is on the front end with the Optio coupler side that is powered up at 5 volts DC. So and then it's controlled via this cable here to each one of your pins or your output pins or your digital pins I should say that is controlled by the DCC um, command address. So in short on this one this is pin digital pin 12 that's address number 30 that will control this relay number one here switch it on and off so all we are all we're doing here is basically switching the 12 volts which is what is required to power up the the light strip here so we've got a 12 volt from directly from the 12 volt power supply into the common of this middle binding post of the relay. And then we're gonna use the normally closed on the bottom here. So when we fire up this little guy, it won't automatically switch across and turn our lights on. So we wanna be able to switch them on where we wanna switch them on. So from there, from the back end, we it's just this little guy here is the 12 volt power supply that would negative power supply for the light so that just goes directly to your power supply let's quickly give the, the we'll quickly give the test to the rig here so over on the screen the insert there we've got the the dr5000 by digikais and that's the dcc command station so you can see with the green light that is now on i can turn it off obviously from the computer now, what we're looking at doing, as discussed, we're looking at turnout address number 30. So we just need to get a switch command and you'll see the light coming on and off in the screen there. So this is the Arduino IDE, what you load the sketch into your Arduino. So I've already done a reasonably comprehensive video on this, how this goes about, but I won't go into how much, I won't go into the, the whole ins and outs of how this works, just what it looks like and just the basic things you need to look at doing. So you can see here, this is where all the, the addresses go. So currently from 30 through to address number 36 and what digital pin that's gonna go to. So it starts at 12 and goes through to pin six. And then from there, what you need to look at doing, you need to define how many accessories you're going to do. So this is going to be six on mine. And then you pretty well don't need to touch anything else at this point in time. So it's just a matter of uploading the sketch to the Arduino and then plugging it and testing it. So I'll show you very, very quickly on Train Controller how you might do this. So other programs, I'm sure you can do it like JMRI and iTrain and Rockrail. I'm assuming you'd be able to do something very similar to this. So now... It's just a matter of setting up a an, what they in train controller world is called an accessory switch or a toggle switch. So this is where we put the DCC address. So this first one is the UBS, which is the upper staging. 
and I'll show you that when we get out to the layout room. So it's just a matter of putting you in address of number 30, I'm sorry, DCC address number 30, and then I name it, and that's all I do at this point in time. So Train Control's got these little things called flagmen. So they're neat little internal internal switches. That's probably the best way to describe them. So they've got different things. So what we're going to look at doing is triggering and the operation. So it's triggering is what turns it on and off. So in short, this here is going to be the trigger. So UBS in stop. So that's one of the what they call contact indicators. So a contact indicator, very, very briefly, is, is what your occupancy detection is detected. So it is connected to. So this is currently in the on state because it's little, as you can see, it's red there. So what that actually means is so when the train, when some sort of locomotive, lick coach, or a freight car that's got resistor wheels and is going to draw some sort of current, the occupancy detection will pick that up and turn that on. So in turn, so once that turns on, what happens is it then goes and turns these switches on. So from turns the UBS one to on, then a delay of 30 seconds, and then turns it off. And that's pretty well it. So you might think 30 seconds, that's not all that long. So just for the, the sake of this video, I just did it a very, very short amount of time that it just gives enough time for the train to get from one level to the next effectively. And then I've done exactly the same with the other one. I won't give a demonstration of that, so to speak, because um, it's exactly the same. So this is the entrance to the Fallen Log Railway. Um, just orientate you give you some sort of idea so off to the left here is the the alpine section so you can see that probably sits at about five feet above floor level on that upper track so as you can see that whole area is reasonably dingy don't know whether you can see the trains lit in underneath there so they're just the coach lighting so effectively the way this works so this upper level is my my staging or what i call the rest of the world for all my freight trains and the lower section is just purely for passenger trains. So I'll just quickly go over now, as I've alluded to, I've actually set it up so it's controlled via DCC or DCC switch command. So we've got the DCC Roco Wi-Fi controller here. So if I just turn that on, you can now see that we have now got most of our yard lit. I haven't actually finished uh, the far end of it, but this, this front section is actually lit. And then just give it another switch command and it turns itself off. So that's on address number 30. So if I was to go to 31, now you can see that the, the, the undercroft or the what I call the lower staging is now illuminated with LED lights. All right, so what we're gonna do, we've got the, so we've got here the, the Roco BR44 sound locomotive. Now, I do have the lights of the lower staging area on just so we can see the loco a little bit more because it is rather dark. So basically what we're gonna replicate here is a train that's gonna be parked away in the, my staging. So my staging, as like most of them, represent what I'm, I call the rest of the world. So what we'll do, we'll set the train going, give the train's horn a quick toot. Now it'll only move a few inches and then these lights should go on. There we go, so let's get motoring because I've only got 30 seconds. Now 30 seconds is not probably what I would look at doing in the real world. I haven't sort of worked out how I'm gonna be moving forward do all this, um, how I'm gonna turn them on and off and likewise. So there is the 44 coming through there now and that's not a speed I would be going through this part of the, the layout, that's for, that's for sure, so now what will happen in 30 seconds, that should go off. There we go, so we're now off. So there is a few different options that I can look at doing by for turning this, these lights on and off. So one option is here where this 44 has ended up on the far track here. Um, each one of these, these yard tracks has got two sensors. So one for what I, uh, helps the train slow down nicely and one is sort of what I call a brake. We could use the same methodology on train controller that I showed you previously to turn it on and off once this sensor gets activated. So there's, sky's a the limit on this type of thing. So what you probably could also look at doing, you could have a switch, uh, a physical switch in the real world that would f go via an Optio module, which would feed that information back in via a loco net to the to train controller that way also. So you've always, always got real time, real time monitoring of 
the position of the switch where it's on and off. So what we've got going here, you can see this is Smart Hand, which is the another application to train controller, which is basically I can bring up on a wireless network within my layout room the switchboard to control trains or control panel. So right now this is my Arduino one that I've got my Arduino switch is going to. So you've got the, the bottom here so you can see the UBS, which is this upper staging area, and the LBS, which is the one that uh, sits below. So when I'm to do the controller here on channel, uh, sorry, DCC address 30, you can see how the on here comes on and off, and then I can switch it off. I can go over to address 31, which it does the lower one, and you can sort of see the bottom here, how we can switch that on and off. So on the other flip side of this, when, so now I can replicate here as if there, there's like a modium on the track. So I'm just putting the it on now. So you can sort of see the on and off there. And obviously that will go through its 30 seconds timer countdown or delay, call it what you will, and then it'll turn itself off. So that's the end of the video. So thanks for watching. So as always, I've got three questions now. Number one, is this the sort of system you might look at using? So obviously I've added the DCC component to it, which that's just what I like using because I'm all into the automation and that type of thing. Just let me know how you might have done. It might be just a simple little toggle switch on the on a, some sort of fascia or something, which is more than okay as well. Number two, if this is the type of system that you would look at using, how might you tweak it a little bit to, to suit your needs? I'd be really interested in the comments below. And number three, as always, how could I have made this whole project better or other ideas on how to lift the game regarding the DCC decoders and the like. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Make sure you subscribe. Click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos. Support us on Patreon. Like us on Facebook and Instagram at Model Railroad Technique.